Good morning, everybody. Sister Brooks here. It's early Saturday morning, and I wanted to um, just get out um, some scriptures that I had posted on yesterday concerning the um, holiness and the, what I said it was, the virtuous and the honorable living, and the statement that I made in regards to, uh, for God does not dwell in an unclean temple, and all that good stuff. So let's get ready for this morning, our little brief little encounter, and I pray that, that I will say something that is going to be beneficial to you at this time. Lord God, in your precious name, Lord Jesus, I ask that you would just have your way right now in our lives all day today, every day. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, before I get started, I wanted to go ahead on and read um, one of those thoughts that I found in this little book, Thoughts on Prosperity, Thoughts and Reflections from History's Great Thinkers. And the one that I wanted to read to you came from a Norman Mason, M-A-C-E-W-A-N. Anyway, uh, Norman says this, Happiness is not so much in having or sharing. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so that's what Norman said. Now, on yesterday, I had given you some scriptures, and I want to go back over um, two of those scriptures in particular, um, dealing with um, uh, the holy temple, God is, um, our bodies is the holy temple. And on yesterday, I read to you, I believe it was First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 7. And that reads, for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. All right. And a lot of people may say, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a filthy person. I'm not a bad person and everything like that. But um, when we think about what God um, requires of us, and when we think about what God um, says is sin, then we need to start changing our behavior, um, dealing with our own thoughts, our actions. And so I would like to um, give you, well, I'm a, I think I might have to read this scripture in um, Galatians, but before I do that, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 because that scripture there was very good. And I would like to make sure that I read it and we get some good understanding and clarity on it. Okay. So let me slide back here so I can get my Bible here. Okay. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and it was verse 16, I believe. And it says this, and, and I'm going to read a little bit more from it. It says here, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwell in you? Now that's a question. Do you know it? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. And that is you. Sorry about that. You. You are the temple of God. But if you defile it with um, unrighteousness and unholiness, the wrong things, then the, the Holy Spirit is not going to dwell there. And that's where a lot of people get um, God will not dwell in an unclean temple, uh, especially when we say it like that. Um, when I, I was looking at another scripture, and that was in 1 Corinthians again, but it was, um, I think I wrote down, um, 1 Corinthians 6, okay, and 1 Corinthians chapter 6 is very, <laughs> I wish you could see my Bible, how I have highlighted it, but it says here as a little um, subtopic of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says God to be glorified in the body, in your body, and the, uh, in a New American Standard says the body is the Lord's. And then when you get to NIV, there says sexual immorality. So what is, what, what, is, what are they, they talking about here? Okay. If you would begin reading 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 20, you will see that God is going, is, is in his word. He's taking you 
in a wonderful direction, okay? He is letting you know exactly what he considers is unclean, all right? Now, remember, I said that in 1 Thessalonians, God has not called us to uncleanness. So what, what are you talking about, Sister Brooks? Let's read a little bit from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I encourage you to read this on your own. I encourage you to get understanding and clarity as to exactly what King James, Amplify, NASB, NIV, whoever, whatever um, um, Bible that you're looking at, if it's the message, whatever, but get a clear understanding of what the Lord is saying is unclean and therefore makes you not an honorable individual. All right, let's read a little bit here, okay? He says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Sounds familiar, doesn't it? All right. He says here, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. All right? Now, am I um, making this up on my own? No, that's why I gave you the scripture for you to read for yourself. When I teach this um, lesson for my Bible at, uh, with students sitting down, we're sitting down, we're talking. We have our dictionaries, our thesauruses out with our pens and our papers. And we take each one of those words and we break those words down. So there is no way possible a person can walk out of that class and say, I don't understand what an, uh, an idolater is or adulterer is. You're going to know exactly what it is. Why? Because I want to make it absolutely plain to you. Now, let's look at another translation of this. So that the USA, what Sister Brooks is, she's picking on me. I'm picking on the fact that God has given me this word to give you this morning. All right, in the Amplified, very wordy, but very good. Do you not know that the unrighteous and the wrongdoers will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived or misled. Neither the impure and immoral nor idolaters or adulterers, nor those who participate in homosexuality, nor cheats, which are swindlers and thieves, nor greedy graspers, nor drunkards, nor fouled mouth revelers and slanders, nor extortioners and robbers will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. Oh, Sister Brooks. Did you really read that out of the Bible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Certainly did. And you heard it too. So now you're responsible for your own actions. That is the thing that preachers and teachers should always make absolutely sure that hearers understand is that once they see and hear what the word of God has said, then they will absolutely be responsible for their own actions from here on out. Um, the older people back when I was a young teenager and young adult, they used to say, I don't want that blood on my hands, so I got to tell you. And they'd be sometimes like my um, foster mother used to wring her hands like this. I don't want that blood on my hand, Robert. Ooh, I don't want that blood on my hand. Once the word has gone out and once you've heard it, that seed of the Lord Jesus Christ's love has been planted in you. Because when Jesus Christ died on the cross and said it is finished, then all the excuses that we can give, well, God, you know I'm weak, and, and, and well, Lord, you know I need this, and that's the only reason why I did. Well, Lord, I, we all have excuses, but once we hear what the Lord has said in his word, we have no other excuse, okay? We have no other excuse. So um, the lesson, the topic that I've been teaching on for the past couple of days deals with being a virtuous individual, not just only a virtuous woman, but being an honorable individual, being a righteous and an upright person. I think I, what did I do? A upright, conscientious person, an incorruptible person, a good person, a person of ex ex um, exemplary character, good character. 
But in order for you to know that, you've also got to know what the sin is. And so um, I'm going to come back to that again one day, this 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But I want you to read it for yourself. I'm not going to do it this morning because I said I'm just going to have a little moment of time with you. Praise the Lord, oh. Sister Latson. God bless you. Um, just want you to know that God is not going to dwell in your unclean body. So if you are a partaker such as, and I just read just 9 and 10. Yeah. I just read verses 9 and 10 of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Haven't even gotten down to the part where I wanted to get to, but I wanted you to understand and see that the unclean portion of, of our lives that we consider as normal, God wants us to repent from that. He's already said it. And I mean, it, it, can it be any plainer when you got to verse 10, shall inherit the kingdom of God. When he started out, he said, be not deceived. None of this is going to inherit the kingdom of God. So if you think that by going to church every time the church door open and giving, paying of your finances, um, doing your, your labor, your physical labor or whatever it is, is going to get you into the kingdom of God. But if you still have this sin in your life that you have not repented from and are actively not participating in these actions, your soul is still going to be lost. Okay. Um, I should have ended on a, a better note than that, but I got to tell it the way that the Lord gives it to me. And as a missionary, that is my job. That's my duty. But the Lord gave me teaching and I'm going to teach. I love it. As a matter of fact, because first of all, I got to put the mirror on myself. If I'm a liar, I can't tell you to stop being a liar. Oh, I take that back. I can tell you to stop being a liar, but, um, Mm -mm. If you see me actively lying, then you're going to say, well, how are you going to tell me to stop lying and you're not lying and you're not stopping it? So today, let us all be um, not be weary in well-doing. The benefits that we want to reap, let us reap that which God gives us. So that is just for today. And I really wanted to get into that. But I'm going to have to go on my YouTube page, I think, and teach this a little bit more. Um, okay. So you all forgive me for not going too deep in this today, but um, if you follow me on YouTube, you'll probably find it um, later on. I'll probably teach on that. But again, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, read that as well as 1 Corinthians chapter 6. When we're dealing with being an honorable person or a person whose temple you are, such as in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7, now you know. God bless you. This is Sister Brooks saying, peace be unto you. God bless you, Sister Lassen. Hope to see you soon. Peace. Amen.